Happy Sunday. It's a Sunday spiel. What? What? So, I have two things I want to talk about today. Two. The first is my amazing friend Mindy got married today. Ah! I cried so many ugly tears, like all down my face, hot mess express. In fact, this hair is a direct result of getting too crunk on a brunch dance floor. Also, I might have instigated shot runs, whatever. You know, just going from a dry redding to a bar to, you know, get a couple shots. <laughs> Mindy is one of the best people I know in the world. She's actually one of the nicest people I know in the world. And when I think of people I want to be as nice as, I typically think of Mindy. Uh, she just has the kindest, most caring soul ever. And I've never heard her say anything cruel unless she's kind of been like coaxed to say it. Like it's been drug out of her. She literally is the sweetest person I know. And I was so honored to celebrate with her on her big day. And She's just a beautiful person and she was a beautiful bride and it also gave me this like renowned faith in love. I love the idea of love, but I'm not very realistic that I feel like it exists. And today I realized it did exist. It just doesn't exist for me yet. And that'll happen in its own time. But it was beautiful to see two people that just genuinely cared about each other. I've been to weddings before and I know that you guys have been to them before too where you sit at one and you're like, <laughs> this is like a two to three year relationship, like max. Like, I'm gonna call it right now, who wants in on the pool? This was not one of those weddings. It was literally like, oh my God, they need to be together forever and they love each other so much. And just balls and balls and balls of tears. And you know, it just, it's great to be in the presence of something like that. Cause it is rare, it is rare. And I think it's undervalued today. People enter relationships with the thought of it being a temporary thing. And it was nice to see two people enter a relationship knowing that this was far from temporary. It just was beautiful. I definitely, I had to wear, I think one of my favorite all time dresses ever. I'm actually wear, still wearing it. It probably smells, whatever, get over it. It is this lovely blue number for ASOS. I took a couple pictures of it, which I'm now gonna show you because I love them and they're gorgeous and deal with it. I was in this beautiful place wearing a beautiful dress, watching two people beautifully in love and it was just perfect. I think sometimes when you get dressed, when you feel like you're best when you're dressed and that moment is also perfect, it's just like a magic moment where everything feels perfect. It's very, very rare. So I celebrate that today. I also took an amazing photo on a hippo which I also have to share because it's pretty amazing. And <laughs> I just had a lot of fun. They had one of the coolest things ever, which was a sprinkles goodbye. So a lot of people throw rice or have bubbles, but they threw sprinklers because, not sprinklers, that would be really hurt. That would hurt, like if you got hit with a sprinkler in the face, you'd be like, this is the worst wedding ever. You took out my eye. No, they threw sprinkles. They threw sprinkles, little packs of sprinkles because they own a bakery. So that was just a really cute, I guess little nuance to the wedding that I loved. So I wanted to share those pictures. So this is obviously why I'm talking about it <laughs> because I just am so happy for them and I think I looked fabulous and yeah, so everything was great and I want to share it. Now on to the harder thing to talk about. So it's interesting that the week ended this way because this week has been a series of uncomfortable conversations. Now, Uncomfortable conversations are those conversations you know you need to have, but you really don't want to have them, right? Oftentimes, this is when you're angry at someone or when something doesn't go the way you expected it to go and you don't understand why. So you have to have that uncomfortable conversation. Knowing that the response full well may be that you're not good enough or the person is angry at you or that you did wrong but you don't know entering the conversation, right? It's like literally tension. Now what I found, and this is my big lesson that I learned this week, I personally learned it. I avoid uncomfortable situations. I like to be positive and cheerful and I like to be giving and I like to be nurturing. I can still be sassy and rude, it happens, uh, but I don't like to be confrontational ever. So when an uncomfortable situation arises, I sometimes just back down and take it. Or I just get upset and internally beat myself up and never really resolve the issue because to me, the path to resolution has always been so much scarier than actually just you know dealing with 
all the stress and trauma and anxiety of just avoiding it. So this week, I had to have some uncomfortable conversations. I was either forced to by my career or I felt empowered to do it. It was a step for me. So I had three instances of uncomfortable conversations and the results of that taught me so much. The first uncomfortable conversation was a work-related uncomfortable conversation. And obviously I'm not gonna tell the intimate details of any of these conversations because it's none of your business, but I wanna help you guys understand kind of how I felt. I felt maybe somebody had done something wrong or I'd been led to believe somebody had done something wrong and it was hard for me because I considered this person a really good friend of mine and I didn't understand um, why they wouldn't just talk to me or resolve it with me rather than like going behind my back. And it was I was really hurt. I felt let down, I felt um, like just disappointed, right? So, at the urging of my ever brilliant boss, literally the best boss in the world, he's, he's literally my work husband too, so it's a little weird, but honestly, best boss ever, he said, have a lunch with her. I had done something bad where I was just talking smack. Not to anyone that it would affect this person, but I was talking smack and it wasn't respectful to her, right? I didn't really know what happened, I felt I knew what happened, but I was hurt and so I was talking smack and I, was mad at myself for doing that and I had to have this conversation so I scheduled a lunch we went to lunch talked it out and it was definitely less of anxiety and anger and more of confusion uh, things weren't discussed properly uh, people weren't on the same page and so it led people to make decisions with limited information so while everyone was angry and upset uh, it was really, no one really could have been angry or upset. It was everybody had not given enough information or not communicated clearly enough so that no one really knew what they were supposed to do. And when it came down to it, we all thought everyone knew what they were supposed to do. And the reality is we each had a very different picture of what people were responsible of. And I learned from that scenario two things, that I can communicate better to get better results. And that if I talk to someone, oftentimes, People aren't angry, they're scared. And I think in this situation, this person knew something was wrong, but they didn't know why, and they didn't know how it related to them, and they were afraid to talk to me about it because they didn't know the answer, right? They didn't have a clear perspective. So by opening up the conversation, as much as like ripping off a Band-Aid it was, it let out so much stress, not just for me, but for her as well, and led to this beautiful resolution that frankly, I'm so grateful for. And had I not had this conversation, I would have been probably angry at this person forever and uh, I would have lost the opportunity to have a great relationship with them simply because I wasn't willing to take the first step and have that uncomfortable conversation. So that was my first learning. Taking the first step is the most important part. The second uncomfortable conversation I had this week didn't go the same way. Um, I applied for something that I really wanted to be part of. And within seconds, maybe even like 30 minutes, not seconds, seconds is an exaggeration, maybe like 30 minutes, I was rejected. And I wasn't rejected in uh, a professional way. It wasn't, you know, the form email you get when you get rejected from something that's like, thank you so much for applying. We really appreciate your, you know, feedback, your, you know, emotions, <laughs> your emotions. Nobody says thank you for your emotions. It wasn't one of those things where they were like, thank you for your feedback, thank you for your team time, we're gonna review, we don't need you right now, but maybe in the future, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't one of those, right? We've all seen those emails, received those emails. Heck, I've sent those emails, right? So it wasn't one of those. It was literally just a line that says, sorry, we'll pass. And I, and I felt like, whoa, I'm totally worth more than we'll pass, right? A human is worth more than we'll pass. We'll pass is kind of, it's an insulting way to say it, or so I thought. So, I tried to get to the bottom of it. Uh, I sent an email and I just said, hey, I'm, I'm, did I do something wrong? Your email seemed a little curt. I, I don't understand what's going on. Like, are you mad at me? And um, I didn't get a great response back. I got a response. It wasn't mean, it wasn't, it was very neutral. It wasn't uh, offensive, but it also wasn't saying, hey, we shouldn't have said it that way. And it made me realize that I learned about that, that person and that opportunity and that experience. What I learned was 
some things, you need the resolution to understand how you feel about it. Uh, I'm still thinking it was a bad response, but I also know that I probably won't invest my time in trying to be part of that anymore in any way, because if that's the way they speak to me, it's probably the way they speak to other people. And even when I asked them why they spoke to me that way, there wasn't a positive resolution. So in my mind, um, I can now move on and I can focus my energy somewhere else. And if I didn't have that uncomfortable conversation, I probably would have continued to invest my energy, right? I would have said in some way, either I was upset or like, <laughs> I'm type A, so I would have tried to like prove them wrong and get in, right? But I think having that conversation, okay, I was like, this is where I stand. I now know where I stand. I now know what type of response you think I deserve as a person and the way you treat people and I can move on because I don't agree with it and that's okay. And I don't know if they treat everyone that way or if it was the way they treated me, but I know that I personally can move on and that's really healthy, right? Instead of having the aggression and the confusion that I would have had had I not responded, I got to alleviate that and make a decision. And I think that's the second thing I learned, which is uncomfortable conversations oftentimes force you to make decisions that you would put off making otherwise. So while it was terrible and not a great result, not terrible, just mildly, mildly bleh, it was very beneficial in helping me make a decision and move forward and invest my time in a better place. So it was the third story. Um, I still don't know how it's netted out. So I had an incident with a brand and they had expressed enthusiasm to work with me and I was real excited about it. And I was like, yes, it's a brand I love. I would love to work with them. And then, you know, they asked for sizing. So usually like if you shoot with a brand, oh, my nose is itching so bad. If you shoot with a brand, they will ask you for things like measurements of your waist and hip and everything else. They'll ask you, you know, what sizes you typically wear in the brand and they'll ask you for travel dates. That's typically how it happens in the beginning. So I got all of those questions asked to me. I sent all of my responses and then dead silence. And I was like, uh, okay. And a week went by and then two weeks went by and I was like, well, you know, my life is really crazy. Like I need a plan for this. I don't know what's going on. Like I haven't heard back from them. So then I sent an email and no response. And I sent another email and no response. And I called them and no response. And then another email and another phone call. So another week goes by essentially. Finally, I get an email back that's very um, terse. Basically says like, uh, well, we may not be able to work with you now. We'll let you know like three to four days before. And I'm like, I thought, I thought did, did we not have the phone call where I was like, my life is really crazy and I need to plan. And I've worked with other brands before and usually they do, ugh, some of those, Lipstick sometimes gets that stuff in your corners and it just fades. feels weird. Anyway, sorry. Back to the story. Um, you know, I'm really honored to work with brands, but at the same time, uh, oftentimes I'm not getting paid. I'm asking for a charitable donation. And uh, also I have a job that does pay my bills that I need to, you know, continue to do. So every other brand I've worked with has been really, really nice about giving me a heads up, allowing me to plan, but this brand uh, didn't want to give that to me. So. I got a little frustrated. I was like, rah, rah, rah. and I talked to my friend and my friend was like, listen, like you should just email somebody else and see if this is normal. Maybe this is a fluke. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe somebody had a bad day. Maybe somebody screwed up. Something happened and you should try to get to the bottom of it. And I said, but being angry is so much more fun because sometimes you want to feel angry, right? Because you want to feel like you're acknowledging the crappy thing, right? But holding on to that's just like not healthy, right? Yeah, you acknowledge the fact that somebody's mistake hurt you, but you also sit there like with a whole bunch of anger in your stomach unnecessarily for like days. So again, I had to have an uncomfortable conversation. So I sent an email to somebody else who worked for the brand that I knew and was like, hey, this happened. Um, is this normal? I mean, I really love your brand. I love your bland. <sighs> I love your brand, but I don't love the way this situation made me feel. Um, can you help me understand what happened? Obviously, like, I still love what you guys make and what you do, but I want to better understand the situation because it didn't leave me feeling great. So 
uh, ended up getting an email back right away from the person I emailed and kind of things went up the chain and I got a communication from someone pretty senior who was like, whoa, our bad. That is not how things typically go. Sorry, um, we're gonna resolve it. Here's a couple you know, items from our collection, yada, yada. It's now been like two weeks since that conversation. Uh, they said they still wanted to, to shoot with me and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they never sent anything, which like doesn't matter. I didn't need free clothes, but like why say it? <laughs> So now I'm in this awkward situation where I'm like, double uncomfortable conversation? Like, you've gotta be kidding me. One was already hard enough for me to do. And here's what I realized. Sometimes communication sucks in general. And sometimes you have to have many, many uncomfortable conversations before they're not uncomfortable anymore. And that sucks, but part of being an adult is recognizing that these terrible, awful conversations you have to have are a responsibility. That we weren't born just to have cheerful chats. We were born to be human and have feelings and emotions. And if you would want somebody to come to you and talk to you about something that you might have done that made them angry, rather than just being pissed off and saying like, do, 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 middle fingers to the air, I hate you then you have to do the same. And they suck. Nobody likes to do them. Nobody's like, gee guys, I get to have this super awkward, uncomfortable conversation with somebody who I think has been a total bitch to me. Oh, but yeah, I have to do it with a smile on my face. And I have to enter the conversation with the mindset that maybe I misunderstood. No, nobody wants to do that, but you have to. And I realized that as uncomfortable and as stupid and as meaningless as I thought these conversations were, they're really good. And it comes back to those three things. One, sometimes it's all just confusion and you're going to lose out if you don't have the conversation, not the other person, you. Two, sometimes you need to know when to move on. Sometimes the uncomfortable conversation gives you the closure you need to say, I can close this chapter in my book and I'm okay with it. I can say, you know what, I was right. I don't like the way I was treated. It's probably not gonna get better and I can move on being comfortable with that answer. And three, sometimes you don't get a resolution. Sometimes you have to make the decision on whether you wanna keep fighting for a resolution. And that sucks, but that's life. So what I've learned from all of this is that 66% of the time, two thirds, it's likely that having that terrible, uncomfortable conversation will leave you off better than avoiding it, right? So as terrible and unlawful as they may be, you have a 66, 66, 66% uh, 66 chance of being a happier person after having that uncomfortable conversation. And if you don't have the conversation, you have a 100% chance of remaining upset. So in my mind, it's pretty good odds to go and have that terrible, uncomfortable, gross, stress-inducing conversation, however you need to have it, solely because having that terrible conversation has a pretty good chance of making things a little bit better in your life. So that was what I learned this week, and it was really a profound statement for someone like me who is a serial conflict avoider. Um, and I'm proud of myself. It's a huge growth point that I'm like, yeah, did it girl. I'm getting more mature. I'm growing up. I'm growing up. So yeah, I was like really proud of myself and I wanted to share it with you because I, it was profound for me. Anyway, have an amazing week. I'm headed to India tomorrow again. And this time I'm actually gonna vlog in India. Like I'm actually gonna take video of stuff. I'm not gonna just not sleep and work 24 seven, which is what happened last trip. But this trip should be a lot more peaceful. Namaste. Namaste in bed on Saturday. Hey! That's the joke that they put on t-shirts all the bed all the time. They put it like right here with like someone like this. Anyway, I'll check you guys later. Have an amazing week. I have a new haul coming for you later in the week. I also have some other little surprises. 
and I'll check you guys later. Have an amazing rest of the day. Peace. Boo 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 bo